Assalamu alaikum and peace. Welcome to an, this episode of Misconceptions. I'm your host, Muhammad Hashim, and with us in the studio today, we have a very special guest from America, Sheikh Yusuf Estes. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa How are you today? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And also with us in the studio here for the Misconceptions show is our very um, special uh, studio audience once again. Assalamu alaikum. And today, inshallah, we'll, we'll be talking about the misconceptions about Islam again, but we're going to focus on something a little bit more in particular. We're going to talk about jihad. Ooh. Now, we're going to try to, to define jihad today, because a lot of Muslims, and especially non-Muslims, don't know the meaning uh, of jihad, and obviously misconceptions arise from there. So, Sheikh, can we begin to define jihad? Is it easy? <laughs> can we do it? Well, I like the subject. And I think it's a good chance, really, to get the studio audience involved right away. Yeah, I think we should. I think we should get them Let's right into it. Let's uh, find out, brothers, uh, what about uh, somebody come up to you and talk to you about this subject? What have you heard? Some people said to me that uh, jihad is, means holy war. Holy war? Yeah. Does anybody else have anything on this? Yeah, I heard the other way they say it. They say it's a personal struggle. Personal struggle yeah. versus... Holy war. Yay. Which one? Which one do we begin with? Holy war or personal struggle? I think it, the best way, Muhammad, is to just start with the word itself. Yeah. So according, jihad, what, what does it mean? Yeah. According to the dictionary, and I always start with the dictionary, get the okay. etymology of a word, then take it to the scholars, see how they understand it, and then how does it apply in Islam? That, this is kind of like my rule for doing the etymology yeah. of words. Okay. Jihad comes from the root, and as we've said before, Arabic is a root-driven language, one of the Semitic languages, Hebrew being another one of them, Aramaic, another. <coughs> and what we would discover when, by going to the dictionary or Maurid is it comes from this root, Jahada. Okay. Jin, ha, da. Okay. Jahada. Yeah, and okay. what... This is the root for is so many words that if you look at other words that are coming from the same root, you get a better picture. Okay. Let us say, for instance, that we're going to construct an airport or we want to build a university. These are huge projects, not something small. So when it's completed, or uh, for instance, they recently put like one of the tallest buildings in the world in UAE. Yeah. So when they would complete that, they would say in Arabic, we have made juhud, a great struggle. We achieved this great big task by struggling and striving and working something through to completion. We made juhud. Yeah. Okay, now here's another one. Scholars of Islam trying to find the answer to a particular question, something that's not in the Quran exactly, we look in the teachings of Muhammad and we find that yeah. there are some things there, but we want to find out exactly what Islam has to say on a particular subject. So while they're studying and working and putting all this together, coming to this conclusion, we say they're making ijtihad from this same word. Throughout the Quran, I've investigated and found there are many usages of jahada and always coming up with a striving, struggling working and achieving, and all positive, everything having a positive effect in that. Mm. The studio audience, jihadai, were you familiar with that term, what to do with jihad? So, so there you go, I guess the misconceptions also come from, from Muslims, so, uh, or a misunderstanding of the actual word. It's very interesting, Sheikh. Well, it goes further than that. Now, as far as when somebody says to you that uh, jihad is what? A holy war. A holy war. Mm. Okay, let's investigate that and find out if that could be true. Well, holy in Arabic is Quds or Qudus, like Ruh Qudus. That's the holy Ruh or spirit, holy spirit. And another word uh, from Quds is Al-Quds, which is the holy place in uh, Jerusalem. So that's not related to the word, is it? Okay, so we'll look at the word war, Harb. Harb, <coughs> harb al quds, quds al harb, doesn't make it. Have you ever heard anything like that? No, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't it? make sense, no. and certainly it doesn't sound like jihad, or ijtihad, or jihada. 
So how did we make a connection like that? Actually, what we'll find out, if we want to go back and look at the time of the Crusades, let's go back about 800 years ago, we'll find that it was, in fact, the Catholic Church that declared a holy war against the Muslims, Jews, and Christians who were not Catholics. Declared a holy war against them in Jerusalem. And they dispatched a huge army that they said grew by the thousands by the time they got there. And these people were all being told that they were being sent out there on a holy war. And they even had a marching song to go along with it and everything, carrying the cross of Jesus, going off to war. And a form of that song still exists today that they teach children in Sunday school. So the term holy war is very powerful then, isn't it? Across all cultures by the, by the sounds of it. Yeah, whenever you put that kind of context, you know, you mm. enter into something in a person's brain or their heart, yeah. making them believe you're doing this for God. Yeah. Get out there, boy, and do this for God. Something very serious and powerful, yeah. Well, it is, and we find that that does exist amongst Christians. Yeah. But it also, you look in the Old Testament, you'll find it amongst the Jews. Yeah. And you find it today amongst some Muslims who are saying this is what they're doing. Yeah. But we hope in this program to bring enough evidence to show what real jihad is about and exactly what war in Islam is about as well. You say real jihad, I've heard that a couple of times. Is that, is that moving away from the holy, the holy war? Because well, real jihad, as we've already said, is coming from something that means a striving and struggling. Within Clearly. yourself, a personal... Okay, now that's, I think you said that uh, some second, people that's, told that's, that's the second one, yeah. Personal struggle. Personal. Okay, so a personal struggle. Well, we hear this being said a lot by people quoting something from Abu Bakr, okay. who when coming back from a Ghazwa or war, there was, uh, or battle, there was a, a discussion where he's asking about this great jihad that they had the whole, made. The holy war? Well, just jihad. We're going to leave it at that. Okay. And then the comment comes back to him, we're going from a lesser jihad to a greater jihad, okay. or jihad al-Akbar. Okay. And what is the greater jihad? Jihad al-Akbar, jihad al-Nafs. Meaning, nafs. more or less in English, the greatest of all strivings would be on yourself, to correct yourself. That's where they got it from. Unfortunately for these people who come up with this, that's not a true saying. We have clear evidence that this is not something can be attributed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, although many people have tried to use this over the centuries to say that this is, there's no such thing as fighting for the sake of Allah and things like that. There is no such thing? Actually, there definitely is something, but it's not called jihad. Mm. Right now you should be thinking, well... What is it then? Yeah, that's what we're up to now, isn't it? So, any, any other questions about, about that? We, we just go ahead and ask, what is it then? <laughs> Have you mentioned there's a part of the song which is still present yeah. here. Which, which is that song? Oh, they sing Onward the Christian Soldiers. And that song, it actually came from this time when they used to have those crusades. But to come now to the meaning here of... Jihad, we've now understood it to mean a struggling and striving. But when there is reference to fighting for the sake of Allah, it's said in Quran, Sabilillah. But Sabilillah is again a very general term, which means to do something for the sake of Almighty God. You're doing it, it might be to give charity for the sake of Allah, Sabilillah. It might be that you would go out and help other people, help orphans, help build a, a building for people to have shelter. All of these things could also be Sibili law and jihad. Yeah. Again, nothing to do with war. That's a good point because when people ask me uh, about Muslim and jihad, they're trying to say it in a way, a violent way. That's, it's more like jihad means violence. So yeah. The Actually, holy war means violence. In another program, we mentioned that they thought that Islam meant violence. Yeah, the whole now, those encapsulated into one Some thing. Muslims will even say there's no jihad in Islam. And you go, what? That doesn't make any sense. There's a yeah, lot of striving and struggling in Islam. How easy is it for you to get up every morning and do your salah in the masjid and pray fajr with a group? Is that easy? <laughs> I think not. Because 
after a time, it might be so easy sometimes, but there'll be times when you'll be like, oh man, I'm tired. I stayed up late. I worked. Uh, there, it's a long way to get there. It's freezing cold. We just had a big snowstorm back in my country, and uh, I didn't feel like getting up and yeah. fighting through the snow to get there. I so I that, that gives us an idea now that anything we do, striving for Allah, is sabilillah in the way of Allah. And if it's a big difficulty, it could be a jihad. Jihad, sabilillah, and you look to the Quran, and there's your proof. You find jihad, sabilillah, can be many different things. But by the way, the reference to battles, the reference to fighting, the reference to combat in the Quran, almost every time, is not that word. It's another word. And we're going to find out about that word in a little bit more right after the break, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Misconceptions. My name is Muhammad Hashim and we have our special guest, uh, Sheikh Yusuf Estes. We are talking about jihad, so it's a pretty complicated uh, subject and we're talking about the meaning of jihad. Just before the break, uh, Sheikh was, was talking about the meaning, so I think we, we're going to continue on with that because we need to know a little bit more about the meaning of jihad. So, the meaning, uh, Sheikh, a little yeah, bit more about the meaning. We said that the meaning of jihad is not what people think as far as a holy war. Nor is it really meaning a struggle you do on yourself, although that is a jihad. But the general meaning is a struggle, striving to achieve a monstrous task, something really big that yeah. you're achieving. But we also discovered that there is another word that does apply to battles, war, and conflict. But we didn't disclose what the word was yet. No, we haven't yet. Who wants to know? From the studio <laughs> audience, who wants to know? <laughs> Obviously, we all want to know, what is this word? Uh, the word is kital. Kital. Ka, ka, la. This is the root for it. Now, you might be surprised to find that there's no actual word in English for this, unless you do a little compound word. Because it implies a type of conflict to a big degree, it also implies what we'll call mortal combat. Kital is the word that's used in almost every single verse dealing with the subject of what people are calling the holy war. Okay. However, kital also deals with death itself. That when you kill someone, kittel, you kill them. Yeah. All right? But when we look at these verses that are often ascribed to be so-called jihad, this is in what's called the explanation or exegesis of the Quran. In Arabic, that's called tafsir. Because many of the great scholars of Islam understood it as a kind of jihad, not the definitive word, but rather a type of jihad. A jihad where a person is striving with their money, because it costs money to go into a battle, striving with their personal possessions, striving with their time, striving with their conscience, striving with the thought that I might even be killed. You know, so, so many, so many struggles. Yeah, yeah, it's it's definitely a combination. There's no doubt no that struggle. engaging in a war would be a jihad. There's no doubt about that. Okay. But at the same time, you don't want to say that that's what the word actually meant. Yeah. And likewise, when we come to the other side of it, when you say just a personal struggle, that of course is a jihad, but it's again not the only type. Yeah. Jihad is a general term. In the way of Allah, we said sabil, sabilillah. This also is a general term. Yeah. I want to be specific. What is this that's being talked about in the Quran and the teachings of Muhammad that winds up being the altercation of two groups going together Swords in hand or guns in hand and fighting it out to the bitter end. And that word is kittel or kital. And where we find it in a clear meaning is when you look to the explanation behind when it says, kill them wherever you find them. This is the English translation. Kill them wherever you find them. You've heard this? Yeah? But who is it talking about? Well, on some websites I saw, it said that means <clears throat> kill the Jews and Christians wherever you find them. Well, that's about the most extreme that I've seen. But if it meant that, then it would show you that in 1400 years that the Muslims have not been living up to that whatsoever. 
Because, in fact, Muslims have not killed all the Jews and Christians. There's still plenty of them around, true? <laughs> yes. And another point is that if you look at a little bit of history closer, you'll find that it was Muslims who were, in fact, defending and protecting the Jews and Christians, Christians ever since the early days. If we take, as an example, Egypt. When the first Muslims came here yeah. to, the, to Egypt at that time, they joined along with the Christians to fight against the Romans. Yeah. They were well received and highly appreciated because the force of the Muslims with the Christians, they were able to defeat their enemies and drive them out. Because of this, many of the Christians were very attracted to Islam, learned about Islam, they became Muslims themselves, and even tore down their churches and erected buildings facing toward Mecca using the same materials. That can be evidenced by looking to Al-Azhar University today, the masjid called Amr ibn al-As, because I personally was there when these and uh, Ibn Talun, another masjid, mm -hmm. well, I was there 10 years ago when they were tearing these down to rebuild them. They actually pulled out the pillars yeah. and the big beams, and you could see on there what was carved maybe... 1800 years ago, 1700 years ago, where the crosses had been on there and they had actually rubbed them off to replace them mm -hmm. as pillars in the mosques. Allah. And in the women's section of the masjid at Al-Azhar, at the very top, I have actual footage that I shot there. Obviously, there were no women there when I went. No. <laughs> and we were able to capture that on tape. But that's not, not the main point. The point we want to emphasize is there is a word that's not being focused on that should be a part of our vocabulary to understand what we mean. The word is kital. This word is used in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 190, verse 191 and 192, with a big impact. The translation of meaning uses the word jihad. This is a huge mistake for a translator. Why? Because jihad obviously is an Arabic word. Yeah. But the word does not appear in those verses at all. So how could you take an Arabic word and then translate it to Arabic? Huh? And that's what they did. That's where the mistake comes from. So this is not the fault of non-Muslims. This is the happening. fault of Muslims mm. who did not stop to think what they were saying because it gave the whole wrong impression. If they would have said this is one type of many kinds of striving and struggling referred to as jihad, it might have been better. If they could simplify the struggle and break it up, it would make a bit more sense, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Mm. Does anyone in the studio audience have, a, have something to say about all of that? Uh, my question is... Uh, if Anybody comes to and asks you, what is jihad? What would you, what, what Where would, would you be start the answer? From? Where would you start? Because obviously there's so yes, much involved. So there's a lot. It would and be too big. If you start quoting verses from the Quran to a non-Muslim, they might get a bit funny. According to the methodology that we're offering in this program called Misconceptions, we're showing the Muslims how to properly respond. Do not be offended. Don't get upset. Don't try to get uh, in a defensive position. And it's okay to say, I don't know, when you don't know. <laughs> Nothing a wrong with that. A very good point. What we generally say is to respond like this. Say, thank you for asking me about my religion. Try that. Thank you for asking me about my religion. As soon as you do that, you'll relax and so will they. Then mention... We have to tell the truth. We cannot lie or we can go to hell forever. Another a very important point is we have all of the resources that are preserved. We're not depending on people's imaginations or dreams to come up with answers. Everything in Islam is preserved in the original Arabic language in the libraries. You can go and look it up for yourself and find that what I'm telling you is exactly right. If I have a mistake, you come back and correct me. But that's the final definitive answer what the Prophet said, peace and blessings be upon him. Now let us look to the next thing to mention. And that is that if you hear in the answer something you like better than what you have, are you going to be prepared to move away from what you have to something which is better for you? Do you, do you tell them that before you, you, you start Always talking? before I give before. the answer. 
always before. So it's like I'm going to give you the answer. If you do like it, are you gonna, are you willing to come closer? If they or are say you going uh, I don't care, then I don't care either. So go ahead, have a nice day. Okay. Because if a person is rational, and this is the only kind of conversation to have is a rational conversation. Yeah. You don't argue with insane people, right? No, no. You, need, let you, need it go. A, you need a bit of reason. Yeah. But if a person says, yes, if I see something good, I would go to it. But if he says, no, I, I like bad stuff, okay, bye. I don't want to waste my time. Hmm. Then simply said, the word jihad is misused. The word jihad is something very broad. It means any kind of struggling and striving. And it can even be for something bad. Not always good. But in a sense, we're looking at it being ascribed to the accomplishments that are positive. However, the word we're really looking for that's in the Quran, that's in the Hadith of Muhammad, peace be upon him, is clearly the word kital. Kital is a word very clear, could mean death. It is combat and it can be mortal combat. When people are engaging in martial arts, this is a form of combat. This could be kital. If you're fighting all the way, you're willing to go all the way to the end, this is kital. That's why they use the word fight in the translation. But when it says kill them, it is not moving to a whole new word. Because fight and kill are not the same thing in English. You can have a fight with your wife. Right. You can have a fight with a principal. You can have a fight with a banker. But you're talking about oral. You're talking about arguing. Yeah. yeah? But when you talk about fighting in a boxing ring, you're getting closer, but still you're not out there to kill somebody. Yeah. So how do we take fight and get killed is because kital means that if you continue all the way, the ultimate of kital will be death. Somebody will die unless they stop. Now let's look to the verse 190 and see what does it say. It says, engage in kital with them if they engage in kital with you. So if they're fighting you, you in mortal combat, yeah. fight them in mortal combat. Right. But if they stop, you have to stop. Otherwise, you're the aggressor. Verily, Allah doesn't love the aggressor. Then it goes to the next level and the next verse and says, Waqtuluhum, which means and kill them. But it means and kill them in mortal combat if they're killing you in mortal combat turning them out from where they turned you out, meaning the idolaters and pagans only of Mecca, because that was the specific instance it was talking about. And one final thing is, almost every time it's mentioning this in the Quran, chapter 2, chapter 5, chapter 9, chapters throughout the Quran, it's also associated with people making hajj, because they were talking about the incident to go back, and could they fight in combat while they were dressed for hajj. How does that sound to the studio audience? I think that's a, a lot of information for today. Like I said, we've, we've spoken about jihad, we've gone into the meaning of jihad, and we've talked about how to respond when people kind of look at it and, and, and kind of relate it to violence. So we can, if you break it up and, and answer truthfully, inshallah, we'll give some uh, definite meaning to that's jihad. That's what it's all about. So inshallah, uh, we've all benefited from that today, alhamdulillah. Okay, then the uh, time has run out again for our show, Misconceptions. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did, and I'm sure the studio audience did. Thank you again, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Estes. Thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.